Have you ever heard of the chemical ethane? While it might not be as widely discussed as natural gas, ethane plays a critical role in industrial economies. It's a key ingredient in the production of tens of thousands of items, plastics, rubber, fibers, coatings, and more. When ethane supply is disrupted, it halts the production of ethylene, sending shockwaves throughout the entire chemical industry. Back in May, former President Donald Trump announced a new export license approval process for United States ethane shipments to China. As a result, three ultra-large ethane tankers that were en route to China were abruptly stopped by United States authorities. These vessels were carrying just over 2 million barrels of ethane, valued at around $200 million. To avoid delays at their destination ports, Enterprise Products quickly reapplied for an export license. But the United States denied the request, citing military concerns. The decision also included a full ban on ethane exports to China. So the big question is, why did the United States block ethane shipments to China? And how will this impact China's industries? If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future updates. Now let's dive into today's topic. In recent years, thanks to the shale gas boom, the United States has seen an explosive rise in natural gas output, becoming the world's top producer. As of 2023, the United States was responsible for over one quarter of global natural gas production, averaging 112 billion cubic feet daily. This abundance also ensures a steady stream of raw materials for ethane. Let's look at shale gas extraction in the United States. For every 100 cubic meters of shale gas, about 30 cubic meters of natural gas liquids are recovered, and roughly 42% of that is ethane. Most of America's ethane comes from the Permian Basin in Texas, where ethane content ranges between 12% and 35%, well above global averages. Thanks to advanced methods like hydraulic fracturing, shale reserves once seen as unreachable are now being mined at scale. By 2024, United States ethane output hit just over 61 million tons, 56% of global production. Of that, nearly 9 million tons were exported, primarily to markets in Europe and North America. Among all these customers, China stands out as the largest buyer. Currently, China depends on imports for 98% of its ethane supply. In 2024, China's demand reached 6.8 million tons, with 5.53 million tons imported, almost entirely from the United States. So why is China so reliant on American ethane? It boils down to two main reasons, purity and price. United States ethane exports typically exceed 95% purity, requiring little to no extra processing. That saves Chinese companies time and money. On top of that, American ethane is cheaper. In 2024, the United States FOB price was about $140 per ton, with shipping and fees bringing the final cost to around $320 per ton, far more competitive than other sources. But now, with the sudden export suspension, the picture has changed. In the last decade, China has made big advances in fields like electric vehicles. It now commands over 70% of the global EV market and could soon surpass 80%. That kind of dominance isn't something the U.S. welcomes. So in May, Trump introduced a rule requiring companies to get permission from the U.S. Commerce Department before exporting high-purity ethane to China. In June, three massive ethane tankers headed for China were intercepted. These ships, operated by energy firms Enterprise Products and Energy Transfer, now risk causing $200 million in penalty losses if delivery deadlines are missed. Enterprise quickly refiled a request to ship 2.2 million barrels of ethane, but the U.S. rejected it again, citing national security risks tied to military usage in China. Those tankers have since abandoned their China plans and are now searching for new destinations. This sudden halt has strained U.S.-China trade ties and thrown the American ethane industry into chaos. As we mentioned, China is the U.S.'s biggest ethane customer. In 2024 alone, it bought around 4.7 million tons, roughly 46% of U.S. ethane exports. Forecasts say Chinese imports could rise in 2025 to between 6.3 and 8.2 million tons, a 9% to 34% increase. But with the U.S. shutting off supply, exporters face a huge dilemma. There's no second market with demand like China's. If they can't find new buyers, U.S. companies will need to store the ethane fast. 
the three intercepted ships from Enterprise carry nearly $200 million worth of cargo, and storage alone could cost $300,000 per day. Ethane is especially tricky. With a boiling point of minus 88.6 degrees Celsius, it's volatile and must be kept in ultra-low temp tanks. Every unsold day adds tens of thousands in storage expenses. If the ban lasts six months, inventory could exceed safety limits, forcing companies to vent or burn it. Trump's move has already shaken up market prices. As of June 4th, U.S. FOB ethane prices dropped to $139.88 per ton, a $28 drop in just one week, or 17%. The landed cost of ethane in China has also dropped. It's now estimated at 3,267 yuan per ton, 231 yuan less than on May 29th, marking a 6.7% decrease. Industry experts warn that if the U.S. continues to restrict ethane export licenses, the mismatch between supply and demand will only worsen. Prices could keep falling, which would deal a serious, potentially irreversible blow to the entire industry. Despite the loss of U.S. ethane, China isn't entirely powerless. As mentioned earlier, China's reliance on ethane imports is around 98%, and almost all of that used to come from the United States. With that supply now cut off, the companies that rely on ethane to produce ethylene are feeling the impact first. According to data, if ethane imports are cut in half, China would face a raw material shortfall of about 3.57 million tons. That, in turn, would lower ethylene production by roughly 1.2 million tons annually. In the short term, switching to alternatives like naphtha or liquefied petroleum gas, or LPG, to produce ethylene would increase production costs by 30 to 50 percent. Buying ethane from the Middle East instead of the U.S. would also push up costs by 400 to 1,000 yuan per ton. Plus, Middle Eastern ethane typically has only 90 percent purity, compared to the 95 percent or more from the U.S., leading to higher downstream processing costs. These challenges are significant, but still manageable for China's domestic industries, at least for now. So, how is China planning to adapt in the long run? By 2024, China's total ethylene production capacity reached 35 million tons. Of that, 68% comes from traditional naphtha cracking, while ethane-based production accounts for just 13%. More importantly, the same month the U.S. imposed export restrictions, China unveiled a promising new solution. China has achieved continuous operation of the world's first wind-powered ethylene production system. This cutting-edge tech first uses solar power to create hydrogen, captures carbon dioxide to produce methanol, and finally converts that methanol into ethylene. According to Chinese researchers, this green method is about 12% cheaper than importing ethane. Meanwhile, Engineers in Karame, Xinjiang, have developed a cryogenic separation system that operates at minus 170 degrees Celsius. This tech boosts ethane extraction rates from shale gas from 60% to 95%, cuts energy use by 40%, and costs 30% less than similar imported U.S. equipment. China is also diversifying its ethane import sources. One key new supplier is Canada. Canada has stable and abundant ethane reserves, producing about 4 million tons annually, mostly from western natural gas fields and some shale gas. Canada's ethane is cost-effective, with a production cost of around $180 per ton, $20 cheaper than the U.S., and a purity close to 99%, higher than the U.S. standard. Canada is also investing heavily in next-gen ethylene production. In 2024, the country launched construction on the world's first net-zero emissions integrated ethylene and derivatives facility with a $6.5 billion investment. It includes an ethylene cracker, a 2 million ton polyethylene line, and upgrades to existing systems to reach carbon neutrality. Phase 1 is scheduled for 2027, adding 1.285 million tons per year of capacity. Phase 2, set for 2029, will add another 600,000 tons. Besides Canada, China is also in talks with other suppliers. After the U.S. shift, the UAE was quick to offer ethane at prices 10% lower than U.S. rates. Saudi Arabia also stepped up, initiating talks to increase exports to China. Some Chinese importers are now requiring new contracts to avoid U.S. shipping routes altogether to prevent future disruptions. It's clear that while U.S. officials believed the export ban would pressure China, the move has backfired. 
Instead of weakening China, it's accelerated efforts to reduce reliance on foreign ethane and put U.S. exporters in a bind. The U.S. hoped to leverage ethane restrictions to force China's hand on rare earths, but instead it's fueled China's self-sufficiency drive. To stay informed on future developments and insights like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. We'll keep bringing you more important updates and deep dive content.